What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Janet and in this video, I'm going to be sharing how much money I made on YouTube in the month of February. Not only that, I'm going to be sharing my total income from all my current income streams and explaining how AdSense works. Let's get started. Instead of making you wait to the end of the video, here it is. I made $119.96 in YouTube AdSense this month. For those of you who are still here, let me show you how I made $119.96 by bringing you into my YouTube analytics. And then I will share how much I made in total in February. How YouTube works is you have to make $100 in ad revenue before YouTube pays you. YouTube pays their creators on the 21st of every month. So if you don't meet that $100 requirement before the 21st, YouTube will hold that money over to the next month. I got monetized on February 14th, so I only had a week to make that $100. I didn't make that $100 until February 25th. So I will be paid out in March 21st. So which video made the most money? Obviously, it was the viral Why I Quit My Job at Disney video that made me $87.74. Second, it was the accompanying podcast that made me $8.08. .08. Third was my How to Get Monetized video making me $5.93. Let me show you the individual analytics for each video to really understand how I made that money. For the viral video, even though it currently has 116,000 views, only about 23,000 views are monetized. It had 48,000 views when I finally got monetized. So only 60,000 views were actually monetized. Of the 60,000 views, only a third of them are monetized playbacks. Meaning there are a lot of people using adblock that doesn't count towards monetization. Before I get into the most important thing I learned this month, like the video, it helps the algorithm. Now this is the most important thing I learned this month. If you go into the revenue tab of the analytics, you get a better idea why you got paid the amount that you did. So for my viral video, the CPM was only $6.50. CPM stands for cost per mil. It's the amount an advertiser pays a website per every thousand visitors. In our case, this is how much you're getting paid per 1,000 views. This is an average, so as you can see, some days I got paid more, and some days I got paid less. Now let's go into some of the other videos. The accompanying podcast only has about $4 CPM and 12K views. The Inktober Day 31 video has a $7.40 CPM with 1,000 views. The art influencer clip from the podcast though has $13.50 CPM with 1,000 views. Meanwhile, the How to Get Monetized video has $21 CPM with 800 views. The online course clip from our podcast has $16.91 CPM with 560 views. Even though my other videos don't have as many views as my viral video, they were still able to make money. You can see some video topics are more lucrative than others. It seems art education and drawing videos don't typically yield good CPM, while topics talking about more business-oriented videos do better. What this means is as I grow my channel, I don't have to keep chasing virality or getting an enormous amount of views in order to make money for certain topics. If a good topic with good CPM gets fewer views, I can potentially make more money with that video over time compared to a video that got more views but lower CPM. It may not seem a lot now when I only have 5,000 subscribers, but this will make a huge difference as I grow my audience. There are many creators on YouTube that have tens of thousands of subscribers, but need a lot more views to make money. It seems comedy or content that is purely just entertainment need to chase clout and views in order to make a living. While there are plenty of people in the finance niche that don't have to have even remotely the same amount of subscribers or views to make a very good living. There's no reason why you can't do both if that's your interest. On top of that, from what I've learned from selling my art in person at conventions, every dollar matters, especially at the beginning stages of growth. If I can make a dollar from only 200 views, you can do the math as I continue to grow the channel. 
In my research, I've seen other influencers with as low as $2 CPM and as high as $20 to $40 CPM. This is why when you are new to YouTube, it is more important to be a variety channel rather than a super specific niche if you want to maximize your income. Having a niche will help you grow your subscribers. Having a variety of what I like to call shows will help you make more money. In my opinion, people struggle with staying interested in their own niche after years of making similar types of content. Someone who chooses to build a business surrounding YouTube doesn't want to be bored. So even if a video topic doesn't have great CPM, I would still make it because it's what makes me happy. I would then balance it out by making videos that I know will make me money. Knowing this, for those of you who like things like art education videos on YouTube, maybe consider supporting creators in ways outside of just watching their YouTube videos. Since they get such low CPM, it's extremely important that their audience buys their merch or whatever way they choose to make income. Otherwise, since it's so much more difficult for art educators to make money, it just simply won't be available to you if they can't make a living off of it. At the very least, consider turning off ad block. So when you are first starting out on YouTube, you don't make that much money. You simply don't have experience and enough content with enough views to be making all that much money. But the more videos you make, the more money will stack on top of each other. If you are making evergreen content, some videos will never stop making money. I was pretty surprised that my viral video is still making me money. I thought after a week, the views would stop coming in and I would stop making money on that video. That's the interesting thing about platforms like YouTube versus other platforms like Instagram. Since YouTube videos have more longevity than an Instagram post, there's no telling how long videos will be able to make you money. On a larger scale, it's a great way to convince brands to work with you when you are a smaller creator. If you pitch yourself well, you can convince brands to support you in the very early stages of your channel because those videos promoting their product or service will live forever on your channel. They will be betting on your future success. And if you do become successful, that winds up being cheap promotion for them. At the beginning, you should not be relying on YouTube as your only revenue source. You need to diversify that income. If your business plan is to only make money on YouTube, you're putting yourself on a mouse wheel where instead of being your own boss, you're basically working for YouTube. And that is where YouTuber burnout happens. If YouTube decides to pull the YouTube partner program, you need to protect yourself from that. To be honest, even if I wasn't making any money on YouTube, I would still post videos on YouTube because it's good marketing, which leads me to my total income in February. This month, I made $812.19 in total. The extra $692.23 in revenue is from my Shopify store. This is the result of posting on all my social media platforms. My viral video helped me get a few sales, but it didn't actually help me get the sales later in the month. And here is why I would keep making YouTube videos even if the YouTube Partner Program didn't exist. This month, I made a demonetized video related to TikTok because I used copyrighted music. For that video, I knew I had to use the original song because it just wouldn't be good without it. How much would that video have generated me in AdSense anyways? Only 16 cents. But posting that video with the accompanying TikTok videos generated me a few sales in my online store. More money than I could have possibly made on that YouTube video. More money than even my viral video was able to pay me. That is why I don't necessarily need YouTube monetization to make money. It's a tool for marketing while also providing your audience with valuable content. It would be foolish to rely on YouTube in order to make money. If you do that, you put yourself in danger of losing your entire income if the YouTube Partner Program goes away tomorrow. Similar to if you relied on your 9 to 5 income and got laid off during something like, I don't know, a recession. In my example, YouTube AdSense only accounted for 15% of my income this month. This is true for things like Patreon and Kickstarter as well. People start Patreons, Kickstarters, YouTube channels because there's already an existing audience on those platforms. But as a business, it's our job to build that audience and then bring them to a place where you can control. So if for some reason you are no longer able to use those platforms, you can still reach your audience. There are many ways of doing this, but the most common way is to have an email subscription service 
and your own website. For this reason, it was always in my plans to add and experiment with different income streams, as well as different marketing techniques. Things like affiliate marketing, brand deals, influencer marketing, etc. In my next video, I'm going to be explaining how to make money with your art. So jingle my bells if you want to get notified for when that video comes out. Like the video if you like the video. If you'd like to support me and this channel, consider buying my merch. I'm Janet and don't forget to dare to dream.